What's up, y'all? Figured I'd do a quick little uh, grocery haul. I just got off work and stopped by and grabbed some things. Nothing fancy, but give you an idea of uh, where my mind's at when I'm buying stuff. So right now, all I'm thinking about is like price or cost per meal. And then I look for stuff's on sale. So this is on sale. I love these. You just and I why? Well, because one of them is exactly two meals. All right, there's ten servings in there. 23 grams of protein. That's 230 grams of protein in this bag. So that's 115 grams of protein twice. That's what I'm shooting for. It's about 100 to 130 grams of protein about twice in four hours. <clears throat> and then actually, now I'm looking at, and actually now I'm uh, looking at up and it's about 300 grams. I've been looking, shooting at for about 200, 250, but I think I probably need about 300. So I'm going to drop the fat down a little bit, juice up the protein, and uh, yeah. So these are on sale for five, I believe, so 250 a meal. And then I just got as many as my freezer. I just have a little freezer with, uh, yep, yeah, there's some there's knuckle marks. But uh, anyway, so I just got six of those. <clears throat> Bam. -bam. And then, of course, good old eggs. Two, eight, 36 eggs. <clears throat> and then, of course, they had sodas. It's Christmas, so I decided to get a little treat. Zero sugar, Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. This is a new one. If you like Dr. Pepper and you've never tried this, you need to try it. It's fucking delicious. It's a Coke Zero. Zero caffeine. It's getting plenty of caffeine from pre-workout. This, again, Christmas, so it's a little treat. But there's only 60 grams of sugar in this whole thing. And, uh, you know, so I'll drink like a third of it. So that's like 20 grams of carbs. For me, which is, I guess I could drink this whole thing and it wouldn't kick me out of keto. I won't do that. But this is probably three meals worth of orange juice. <clears throat> and of course, some butter. And this, I never buy this. I drink my coffee black. But again, it's Christmas. It was on sale for two ninety nine. Normally, it's like seven bucks. So, I said why not? But the butter, lemon juice, and that's it. And that was eighty bucks. 85, 70. What's up, y'all? So, if you're tuning in, you've already seen the grocery haul, which is really nice. And uh, definitely gonna be looking at uh, throwing in a bunch more chicken. I mean, unfortunately, I can only handle as much as my freezer can hold, but I really love that, those frozen bags of chicken. And you'll see why uh, at the end of this, you know, I'll show you that recipe. They call it a recipe, it's just the way. I like to cook that frozen chicken that makes it super easy. So if you're anyone that's busy, you know, you got kids or whatever, this is just, I don't know, I love it. My nieces loved it whenever I made it for them, so that's that. And then as far as the workout, you know, y'all really, y'all really like the home gym one yesterday, so we're going to do another one. So one thing about the curls, right, if you've, if you've been watching this and you've been following along, what happened is when I first got all this stuff, the very first workout, I did curls. And man, I could barely get, I just wanted to see, and I could barely get that 100 pound curl bar. I think once, maybe two times, whatever it was. And that was less than two months ago. And so, I want to see what the, uh, how we can handle the 100 pound uh, curls today. My legs feel good, so we did those body weight squats yesterday. They're barely sore, so I don't think that's 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 not sufficient. I don't think for a week's worth of legs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some zercher squats. I'm gonna use the. I'm gonna just, hopefully this works. I'm gonna use my chair as like a rest thing to put the bar, and then I'm gonna do. You know what I'm gonna do? My favorite back exercise: bent over rows. And with those, we're gonna do them light rest, right? Because it's 100 pounds, it's, it's technically lightweight. So I'm gonna do very little rest, less than a minute. And we're just gonna really crank out 10 to 12 sets of those just high volume, just boom, boom, just really 
getting the blood flowing and kind of a cardiovascular style workout too. And I think that's a, that's a model that I really like. It feels good. I go real heavy one week and then two or three weeks of just more volume light. So that, especially with the heavy stuff like deadlift, because it takes so long to recover. I think it's 10 days for a real heavy deadlift session. So doing, uh, going real heavy and then one, two, three weeks lighter in volume. I don't know, again, I'm, I'm kind of creating all this myself on the fly, and uh, which is what I like. That's how I am. I just do shit. I'm not really a big planner. I'm not a real analytical. I do. I am very analytical, but when I just decide to do stuff, I'm all about flow. I just flow. And it's when I something interferes with that, that's when shit fucking doesn't work, right? But when I just flow, when I just do what feels right, whether that's just about any aspect of my life, it's always worked out. It's whenever I overthink shit that, uh, yeah, so that's the plan. Zercha squats with the 100 pounds, and then we're going to do bent over rows, and, and then we just doing curls, baby. we just going to do eight, ten, eight to ten sets of 100 pound every set, just as many as we can do. And then, uh, yeah, and that's today's workout, all with a six, $50, $60 barbell that you can buy on Amazon for the price of a movie and popcorn for two people, right? <clears throat> so instead of going to the movies for popcorn, I'm going to work out. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense to me. And then... I'll show you how to cook that recipe, and there might be one other nice little surprise thrown in there. Or I may wait till the next block. I don't know. You'll just have to find out. So, without further ado, I've juiced up on uh, pre-workout. It's been about 30 minutes. Ready to go, so I'm going to warm up, and then we'll come back. All right, here we go. I'm going to crank up the music. And, uh, yeah, this is one time I, I wish I could just listen to copyrighted music, but obviously I can't make it a video, so... We're just going to go with the AI generated techno. Oh, yeah. Now that's as low as I can go. Even tell that's 100 pounds. It literally feels the same as a body weight. That's awesome. Right 
That's why normally I really like the four to six rep range. But, but yeah, breathing. You're gonna have to work on that. What am I talking about? I am working on that. By doing it, I'm working on it. Quads are that breathing down. When I'm bending my big ass belly, makes it hard to breathe. <clears throat> I don't like hold the breathing and having to hold in at the top and doing a rep. I like breathing as I go down and out as I come up. But right now I can't do that so you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking how wild it's gonna be. When I'm 300 pounds, right? And I'm doing a, a 300 pound squat. 315, three plates. That's the equivalent of this right here. And I think that's, that's key. Oh, we're, Oh, I just think that's interesting. A lot of 300 pounds doing a 300 pound squat. It's the equivalent of what I'm doing right now. You know, 
There's a part of me that almost wants to just do like a hundred pound barbell challenge. Had I thought of that before I joined the gym, I think I would do that. But I, I know for damn sure, doing nothing but those, rows, curls, and some kind of press. Shoulder press, even, even in this kind of lean back and incline. Bring it from my lap. And accessory stuff with the dumbbells and the bands. That is all you need. And I guess I kind of did that right the first six weeks. But I just again. The number one goal above all else in this channel is to inspire myself 10 years ago to start training, get in the gym. And there's just no way that I was gonna last I'm driving an hour in the fucking gym and an hour back five times a week, and just four times a week. Which out there you can use log and all kinds of stuff, but the point is, man, so huge having shit, literally five steps from where I sleep. I'm in the gym. That is like one of the big, one of the most profound. What's the right word? It's not an aha moment. Just a, I don't know. One of the most profound things I've done. Realizations, whatever you want to call it. Five steps from in the gym. And you want a sauna, hot tub, more equipment. Drive 15 minutes to the gym. It's beautiful. decided to do this. I knew I needed something a little extra for my legs. But actually this ends up being just about perfect for that 8 to 12 rep range. And at the end of the day, all in total 600 pounds. Oh, ah, ah. 
Squats there. Now we do some ropes. All right. Hundred pound bench on the ropes. more the middle upper like this I feel it more than here so I'm gonna try that maybe I'll alternate if these feel good I'll alternate between them belly gets in the way. magical about working out hard fasting. I don't need a study. I don't need a degree or any of that. I'm just telling you, there's something magical about working out hard fasting. Is a body evolved millions of years, hundreds of millions if you count genetic memory from the first little microbe shit. starving and working hard, your body's going to do all it can to help you not starve, make you stronger. Now there's a point where you just, right, I mean, you can't create nothing out of something. You can't create something out of nothing. At some point, your fat, your muscles, you can only give you, I don't know. But it's not medical advice, not scientific advice. I'm just telling you for me, my instincts something magical about working out fasting. Maybe not all the time, but sometimes. Because you have a lot of odd ends and funky bits that your body can use for energy that's really not maybe the best thing, right? But if you're never fasting for more than eight hours, then that, that that mode that your body, that autophagy mode never kicks in. And so it just sits there. As far as I'm concerned, it just sits there and eventually rocks and ferments and yeah, not good. But that's just my opinion. <clears throat> I guess we'll see as I progress. If I can't get stronger, you know, then, then put the I told you so. 
Anyway, I'm just rambling. Next up. I love sweat equity. Uh, cuts through all the bullshit. You sweat, you working. If you work and you sweat, it's fucking really simple. sets of the dumbbells just to make sure they're all the way warmed up. It's heavy. 100 pound curls is heavy for me. I'm actually turn the music out for this one. Phenomenal workout. So I just hit that a few sets ago, just hit that fasting burn, whatever you want to call it, or at least for me, 
Start being lightheaded. The muscles are really gassed. So far, we just push through it. And yeah, again. Your body's sole purpose is to help you survive. If you're starving and working hard to get food, your body's going to help you get stronger so you can get food. At least that's my theory. So yeah. Woo. Ironically, the only other time we got this lightheaded was at the gym doing deadlifts. things so much sometimes, especially especially as a beginner. My delts are so beautifully, comfortably sore. Like they're sore, but they're not painfully sore. They're that, I don't know, you either know what I'm talking about or you don't. It's that person, it's that perfect, functional, but noticeable sore. From doing nothing, but 100 pound overhead presses, 10 sets. Sure down the road, I'm gonna do some rotator cuff stuff, but you know, all that actually, you, know, you want the auxiliary. But at the end of the day, especially as a beginner, just doing the basic lifts themselves, and maybe one or two auxiliaries, all you need. So, yeah, on these, I'm gonna be waiting a good at least two to three minutes in between sets because this is heavy. When you're lifting heavy, you want longer rest. <clears throat> now I'm looking at four to six sets. We'll just go by feel. But I want at least four of these, four sets. And then we'll keep going on this or we'll go, we'll finish off with some more dumbbell burnouts. All right, here we go. When we started this, the very first workout we did, we could barely get one of these or two of them. I don't know. Wasn't very much. There's 100 pound curls. Let's see in seven weeks how far we've come. Take it, baby. Ah. Ah. Hell yeah. Ah. I'll take an 800 pound curl set. Let's go. Ah. Ah. All right. Hell yeah. We can barely get this once or twice. And this is after <clears throat> over 100 reps of Zerker squats. And this is after 100 plus reps of rows. Let's go. We getting gains, baby. Oh, yeah. And that was fairly strict. For the rest of these, I'm going to just do a little cheating. Because, again, I believe in compound movements. I believe our bodies are made to work together. Yeah. I did one set of strict just to see if I could do it. Or it's fairly strict. And now, I'm going to engage my shoulders and back. Even the little legs. Especially, <clears throat> I think, I don't know, I like it, but I don't want to lift heavy curls, I'm trying to do it strict. If I, I like heavy curls, but I want to use my body, because, <clears throat> yeah. But the cool thing about the biceps, right, is obviously the deadlifting, bench, squat, all that 100 pounds at the end of the day is me. Well, I mean, if you take away all the body weight, 
This, this is the only thing from the very beginning. Well, I guess I could have done it with triceps too. I just didn't think about it. But this is the first thing from the very beginning we can kind of do like a whole cycle with, right? 100 pounds and under is plenty for curl for biceps. And so we kind of did a little, our own little cycle, our own little seven week cycle with curls. And you just saw the result of it. Could barely do one, then have to do, and now we just did six strict, and we kind of did some English on the last two. Progress, results, undeniable results, baby. And that was all fasted. I built all that strength fasted. I'm telling you, we're doing some crazy shit on this fucking channel. <clears throat> we're gonna break a lot of fucking rules because that's just kind of how I roll. And that being said, I suggest everyone be careful. Talk to your doctor or whatever. Because it ain't a joke. I'm shaking. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but my legs are shaking. My body is shaking. My central nervous system is fucked right now. Even though we just did Zerker squats and rows. This is all fasted. I haven't eaten since last night at like 8 o'clock at night. It's 5.30. So that's like a 21 hour fast. You know. <clears throat> you feel it. But I like it. But that's me. You just make your own decision. <clears throat> this isn't an instructional as much as it is a tutorial, uh, I mean, just giving explainers of what I'm doing and why. realize something. And one of these things I think on the next weigh-in, <clears throat> something I'm going to do to emphasize how important it is to drink water, I'm going to weigh myself before the workout and then after. So you can see how much water you lose just in a workout and why it's so important to hydrate yourself before, during, and after. <clears throat> That's a good idea. I always forget to breathe. And the instant you start breathing through your nose, heart rate, everything just slams out. I mean, it's insane. But it's so easy to forget. Big believer of fasted workouts and fasting in general. Just be careful and make sure it applies to you and your situation. Because, <clears throat> I don't know, I think a lot of people would be freaking out a little bit right now about how they're feeling. I like it. It feels good. <clears throat> I don't think, I, I know I'm not in danger, but <clears throat> it feels, almost feels like I am. My whole body is shaking. And again, even if my body is using an ounce of muscle somewhere, right? So maybe the body is just like, it's just nibbles, nibbles a few grams from right here and it nibbles a few grams from right here. Oh, let me just try to grab a few, few grams right here, some old damaged muscle and then, or I'm using that. So you do maybe the chest and nibbles a little right here. You know, so a few grams there, a few grams there, a few grams there. Does it really matter? No, because those few grams it takes, it's gonna, it's gonna regrow stronger than it was, right? That's that's muscle from five years ago. I want muscle from right now when I'm active. <clears throat> At least that's how it makes sense in my head. <clears throat> the working out fasted is not for the weight loss. I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it 
because I just I believe with every ounce, every cell in my body, that there's some magic. There's something about that. There's just something that happens, and it makes you much stronger. Because otherwise, how can a lion go fucking weeks without eating? I mean, it's not wasted away some amazing. It takes months for that to happen. in that turn. You heard it here first. Fasted burn, baby. That's a real thing. It's different than a fed burn. It's a good burn. It's a, I'm hunting and trying to get some damn food burn. The body's just like, hey, hold on, homie, let me help you out with that. We take a little a few grams over here from this this dingly junk that's been sitting here for two years and we don't know what to do with. We're gonna we're gonna take that down. We're gonna we're gonna build up your a little piece of your bicep. So next time you don't have to struggle so much to get some food. And then and then we reward it by after the work feeding it. So then it's like Damn, that's what we need to do. We need to do more of that. And then it does it again. And then I feed it again. And it's like, oh, we like this shit. Yeah. <clears throat> I just trust me. It may not make sense now, but it will. Well, actually, we don't have to flesh that theory anymore. You see it right here. You saw me struggle. The first fucking work, go watch the first workout. Or let's say my thumbnails me doing a curl. Just go and watch that. Or whatever the, I don't know. Whatever the first back and bicep day was. You see how much I'm struggling. It's been seven weeks. And every workout except maybe one, I was fasted. I built all this strength. Fasted and honestly only eat like 200, 250 grams of protein. Which actually I, it's really I want to jump it up to over 300. I want to start eating about 300 grams of protein. But I built all this strength on 200, 250 grams of protein and one fasted back and bicep workout a week. You can't argue with that. Yeah, this new gains. Of course, I'm not saying I would gonna have that much of a fucking uh, progress in a year, but still. You can't, I mean, there's something going on. I'm not just sitting there wasting away. My body's not like breaking my muscles down, having a seizure. <clears throat> this is gonna be the last set of curls. Well, actually, this is gonna be the last set of the workout. I'm gonna just go, and so I'm just gonna burn out. Body English and everything, just as many as I could possibly do. I'm going to give myself another minute of rest, and then we're just going to burn out. All right, here we go. Final set, 100-pound compound curls, just as many as we can do.
don't even know how many that was. Let's go. What a fucking workout. Holy shit. Oh, don't click off yet. As promised, we do a little cooking. So for all you busy fellas out there, busy ladies, which by the way is cool, 10% of all the people, viewers are, are women, I think that's badass. I wasn't expecting that, so. To all you ladies, thank you. Any of y'all out there that are busy, just buy a <clears throat> this is how I cook frozen chicken. If I don't want to mess with it, I just want to get it out of the way. So whatever the reason is, you get home, you just want to cook something. <clears throat> and you know, used to I would never have thought to do this. I just assumed everybody. But the more people I talk to, the more people I realize I just can't fucking cook for shit. <clears throat> And they overcomplicate it so much. All right. So this is frozen. So you don't need to mess with any kind of oil or anything. Uh -oh. One, two, three. That's perfect. That's half the... Uh, there we go. can't put frozen, you know, just hold, calm down, calm down. <clears throat> All right. Now, that's something you can use or not. I have it, so it's actually good. Just throw a little Worcestershire sauce on there. <clears throat> now, I spray it because it makes the spices stick to it better. That's the only reason I'm spraying it. Now, you can do whatever you want. You can have some kind of seasoning. Just some kind of blackened seasoning. Whatever seasoning. And just throw that on there and you're good. I'm going to pretend you don't have that. Just boom. Just throw some salt on there. And for you that know, the owner out there that know how to do this, don't feel, just <clears throat> understand that a lot more people than you would think don't. So this is good. Salt, pepper, and everyone on the planet should know how to make some good chicken that's juicy and tastes good. Because man, people be overcooking the shit out of their chicken. It drives me crazy. All right, a little bit of garlic. In fact, we're going to use the last of this big ass thing up. Yeah, get nice and garlic. <clears throat> Salt, pepper, garlic, onion. <clears throat> and then chili and really you just do this how it, the, the point isn't exactly what I'm putting on there you just put up what, what, uh, what you like and then uh, a little bit of paprika and that's like your super basic um, seasoning right <clears throat> or if you want to make a basic seasoning salt Salt, pepper, cumin, paprika, chili powder, garlic and onion powder. And there's your basic seasoning salt. All right. So that's good. Now, we just turn this, turn it up, all the way on low. All the way on low. All the way on low. Use a lid. Or like what I use, I just keep a, a thingy in the fridge. I'm in the fridge, Jesus. In the oven. Bam. That's it. It's just like fits like a loose lid. And now you just let that sit for about 30 minutes until your nose. You'll smell it. And wait about 10 minutes after you start to smell it. 15, I don't know. I don't ever time shit. I just know when it's done. I've been cooking since I was a kid. 
And so my nose just tells me when shit's done. I don't know how to explain it other than that. I smell it, and then I just was like, oh, it's done. I get up, and it's done, like, 99 out of 100 times. So, <clears throat> I'll come back and show you the next part. <clears throat> All right. So, it's been about 30 minutes or so, give or take. Like I said, once you start to really smell it, I just around 10 minutes. I mean, that's just a general rule. Again, I never time any of this. I'm only, I'm only paying attention to the time for the video's sake. <clears throat> Take off your lid. Right there. Boom, boom. Now, a lot of that cooking from the frozen is done. And now, the key is that being so low, you're not going to dehydrate it as it cooks. And you don't need a bunch of fancy stuff. And it just sits there and steams. This is really, but see this, now if you've stayed and you didn't leave because you're just like, man, I've cooked frozen chicken, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm going to show you what makes this my favorite way. Okay. Oh. Boom. I'm going to flip this over. Because, yeah, the chicken's not cooked by right now by any means. Flip it. We're going to turn it up a little bit. <clears throat> Throw some more salt. More pepper. And that's it, we're not gonna put any more seasoning on here. Then we're gonna do. Turn over and grab some butter. We're gonna put that right in the middle. <clears throat> a little more. Now this isn't just to add fat. There's another reason for this. <clears throat> So that was on low, and now I'm going to turn it to two, just to just to juice it up a little bit. Get this out. And what this is going to do is this going to create a nice little sauce that we then cook our our veggies our veggies in, and that could be whatever. For me, it's just frozen, and then we turn it up high, and we don't have to work. Just you'll see, but. So we're going to leave that for, I don't know, again, I've literally never timed it, but I would say around 10 minutes, but uh, we'll come back when that's ready. <clears throat> All right, y'all. So I'm not even sure how long that was. Again, I just know it's ready and I'm not being cheeky or anything. I'm just, if I was to teach anybody about cooking one thing, it's that... Once you learn and you watch some stuff and you've cooked, your brain just knows shit. And this really applies to a lot of things in life. If you just listen to your instincts, it's crazy how accurate they are, but people don't ever listen to them for some reason. Well, I'll talk to you guys. So, now what we're going to do, that's basically done. And now again, the actual active thing we've done through all this, we spent maybe three minutes. Even though it's been cooking for a while, so like you get home and you just you got some stuff to do, but you want to get some cooking, boom, you do that and go do what you got to do for 30 minutes. You ain't even got to think about it. That's what's so beautiful about it. And I don't know if you've ever cooked steaks, but how you kind of, uh, when you sear it or whatever and you just brush the butter on it, kind of do the same thing, put some, just let that, that butter will kind of seep, soak in, and it just gives this, gives the lean chicken breast a little extra Fat. I don't know if that makes sense. It just, I don't know. It's its always, I just like it better. I like that little bit of, uh, that little bit of juice. But all right. So, now we're going <clears> to. <throat> Boom. So this is done. We're going to take this, 
and put this in the microwave so it doesn't get cold. A little bit of oh, there you go, that should be good. So again, total cooking, actually mess trussing with stuff, like three, no more than five minutes. Boom, just throw that in there. You don't even have to worry about cooking it, steaming it. Just put it in there. It's about medium to medium high. <clears throat> and again, dictate the salt according to you, salt to taste. When you're on keto and you're fasting, you need salt. And um, it's a fun fact, if you're ever trying keto or fasting and you're cramping, throw about a half a quarter to a half a teaspoon of salt in some water and drink it. And nine times out of ten it fixes it. Keto flu, a lot of that, a lot of that's to do with dehydration because you shed so much water so fast. If you don't, you're not prepared for that, you'll feel it. <clears throat> so anyways, salt, and then there's enough, just about everything in there. I just, I love garlic, so I'm going to put a little extra garlic, <clears throat> and bam. And now you just let this cook, and it's got that nice buttery sauce in there with the spices. I'm telling you, you've never tried this, you need to try it, it's delicious. And then again, I could go, if I still had stuff to do, I could turn this down to like three and go do it. And then just let them cook for a few minutes, come back, stir them, and then boom, then you don't have to fuss with it. I'm hungry, so I'm turning this up because I'm going to kind of stir fry. I don't want it to cook because I'm ready to eat. I'm hungry. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah, that's that. It's that simple. And if you're still watching, thank you. But try this, and then that way I can pay you back for watching because I'm telling you, this is a, it tastes deceptively amazing. It's fail safe. It takes less than five minutes of actual fussing with it to get it done. And then you got food. And uh, yeah, that's also you can, so like you can cook a whole package of chicken like this and then put some in the fridge. <clears throat> So that I don't even know what to call it. It's just I'm just you know what? Working man's chicken and veggies. There we go. Real simple. Cleanup's real easy. Really, you just wrench your pan out, wipe it out. It's good. Which is because for two and a half years I lived in an apartment without a kitchen sink. It was just a little dinky sink in the bathroom, which you couldn't wash anything in. So that's I would cook like this, and then just rinse it out, and I just wipe it out. Heat it up to kill bacteria, and that's basically how I did my dishes. One other thing, real quick if you have an issue with stinky sponges, I'm going I'm to show you a trick so that doesn't happen. All right, boom. You wash whatever you need to wash. Your soaps, your sponges still got soap. Just rinse the surface stuff off. And you leave it like that with the soap in it. And that'll keep it from getting stinky. Then just change it out every so often. All right? But bam. That's simple. You'll never have a nasty, stinky sponge ever again. Just always let it sit with soap in it. These are just about done. Look at that, you see? All that sauce and liquid's basically gone. It's just buttery, seasoned goodness. So, bam. Normally I would've just put it in here, but for the video's sake, I just wasted a plate. Bam. off to the side.
not to ever wash your Teflon when it's hot. That messes with the coating. Let it cool down on its own and then rinse it and wash it out. But anyways, yeah. There we go. Let me wash this because I use this with raw chicken. And there you go. Five minute chicken and broccoli or whatever vegetable. That's simple. So I'm gonna eat this. And that's that. I appreciate you for watching. Peace out, y'all.